to give you a brief demo of the new version of Apple Classroom. So when I open up Apple Classroom, uh, you're going to see your classes automatically created. And that's because we use Apple School Manager and PowerSchool that will automatically generate that. So if you have a class in PowerSchool, you're automatically going to get a class in Apple Classroom with your students already enrolled in that class. Uh, you'll also notice that there is no longer the ability to create your own classes. So when I'm in my Apple Classroom and I wanted to manage or control a class, uh, I'm simply going to tap on that class to open it, and I'm going to see all of the students uh, in that class. Now, by default, Apple Classroom has a range of about 150 feet. So if there is a whole bunch of people um, outside of my classroom, then they may show up as offline. Um, there's also a separate video I have on some troubleshooting tips if things do show up offline. You'll notice I have some students that do show up here and maybe have their display off. Display off just means their iPad is asleep or um, their lid might be closed. Um, but if I scroll up and down, I should be able to see all of these students at once. Now, if I tap on a student's name, um, I get a list of different options that I can see. Um, I could choose to open things on their device. So if I tapped open, this will show me all of the apps that I have available on my iPad that I could launch for them. So I could tell it to open an app uh, automatically on their device. And if I wanted to, before I actually tap on that app, I could tell it to lock that app and they will actually be locked into that app and they won't be able to leave unless I unlock them from it. Now, I will tell you, one of the most commonly requested things I hear is that teachers want to be able to lock a kid into a website. Um, this only locks them in the app, not the website. So this would lock them in Safari, for example, but it wouldn't prevent them from being able to open up new tabs or um, do other things in that app. You also have to be careful that some apps on the iPad will launch other apps. So maybe you lock them in the Canvas app, for example, but if you have Google Docs in that app, that when you tap on an, an assignment in Canvas, that it's supposed to launch Google, uh, Google Docs. But if you have it locked to Canvas, then those things that launch other apps will not work. So uh, you have to be uh, a little cautious with it, but it works pretty well. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can navigate to websites. So I could pick and choose which things I wanted it to be able to launch website-wise. Now, in order to do that, um, I have to bookmark those things up front um, in my version of Safari. So I would open up Safari on my iPad and then I would bookmark the websites that I wanted for a student to be able to use. Uh, once I've done that, now I could simply go ahead and choose that. And again, lock in the app if I wanted to, not the specific website. I tap view screen, I'll be able to see what they have going on on their screen at this time. I can choose to hide. Now hiding will hide all open apps on that student's device uh, and just take them back to the home screen. If I go back, I can also tell it to lock that device. If I lock that device, then their device is gonna show up locked and then automatically gets added to a locked kind of playlist over here on the side. Now, speaking of this sidebar area, uh, it will actually create what they call smart groups based on what's happening in your class. So you're gonna notice a lot of little groups popping in and out of here that shows you uh, when students might be offline, it might show you a group of students who have low battery, which students are locked. So you will get automatic groups that are already created, plus groups based on which app people have open. Uh, and then you have the ability at the bottom by hitting the plus sign to actually create new groups uh, to create your own custom groups if you want as well. So if I go back and tap again, I can tell it to mute that device, which turns off all the sound on that device. They can turn their sound back up. Um, it's just a temporary mute. Um, if I wanted to airplay their device onto an Apple TV in the building, I could tell it to airplay and then simply choose which Apple TV I wanted it to go to, and it would broadcast their screen up on the Apple TV. So it's a good way to have them demonstrate something on their device. Now, I can go through and manage my entire class at the same time. Um, I could simply go and either select and tell it to select all students uh, in this class, and once I have all of them selected, then I can do something with them. So maybe I wanted them all to open up uh, an app. I could simply choose which app I wanted it to open and it would open up on all of their devices. 
or if I wanted it to launch a website, I can simply tap on that website and be able to navigate to that website and have it launch on all of their devices at that same time. Now, I have this class up and running and this class is in progress right now. So another option that I have is if I go to a website and I'm at this website and I wanted to share this website with everybody in the class, if I tap share, I can click on airdrop and I now see all of my class show up in my airdrop. So I actually will see that first hour class that I have open and I can actually airdrop this to every single person in that class and this website gets sent to all of them remotely. Uh, I can do the same thing with files. So let's say I'm in my files app. So if I open up a document and I wanted to share this document with everyone in my class, I can simply tap the share option and then under airdrop, again, I'm gonna see that hour because that class is still going on. All right, that class will stay open until I end it, or if I turn off my iPad um, or so on. So I can airdrop files, I can airdrop websites uh, without even being in the classroom app as long as I've started that class first. Now, once I'm in the class, I could also choose to select certain students tap these three dots and I could lock those devices. Um, I could hide their apps or mute their device as well if I want to. Now when I am finished with my class, I can simply tell it to end that class by tapping on the three dots and telling it to end. Once I end that class, I go back to my class list of other classes to choose from and I could jump into another hour. Now when I end a class, I will also get a small report that tells me what students were in which app uh, how much time they spent in each of those apps and just kind of checking to see if students were on task. Um, so that's a real quick overview of Apple Classroom.